Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to give a simple overview of an example workflow pattern in DevOps or software in general. So DevOps is not one particular thing, but rather it's more like a practice that is adopted in software industry. And when somebody says, okay, they're looking for a DevOps person, they may mean that a person having the following qualities. So first is a person is expected to have some basic programming knowledge. So like any programming language like Go, Python, Java, or any such language. Then one is supposed to have some basic understanding in Linux, basically in a command line. And one is also supposed to know a little bit of Git slash GitHub. So Git is used to basically, you know, version control your program, which means saving the history of your program so that you don't lose it easily. And also it gives you the option to get back to any previous state in your program. And GitHub is a place to store your code. Also, what happens sometimes is if I run a program on my computer, it may work on my computer, but it may not work on your computer. So one such thing that solves this issue is called Docker. So basically it uses containerization to ensure that your application runs the same way irrespective of which machine you are uh, running on. Okay. So once you have written your code base and you have packaged it or containerized it, then you have to run it somewhere like in a server or you know, you're not going to run it on your computer and expect thousands of people to use it, right? So to do this process of deployment and building and also before that you have to do testing because you have to test your code and build and then deploy. So there are certain tools which do that and one such tool is Circle CI. There is another called Jenkins. So this is one of the things that a person working in DevOps is expected to know. Also, once you are running your application in a server, if you want to scale it, so let's say having many servers or many containers which are you know hosting your application, then you need some mechanism to orchestrate this. Or what does it mean? By orchestration is that in case one of the servers, which is basically a machine, if that goes down, that uh, orchestration platform has to ensure that another machine springs the application back up, or it can also do load balancing, or there are many other things that an orchestration platform can do, and Kubernetes is the most famous one. So a DevOps person will have to may have to deal with Kubernetes at some point. And once your application is deployed and you know running fine, then you have to be able to monitor. And in case something goes wrong, then you need to be alerted for that. You can't just sit and keep on checking all the time if your application is running fine. So you need some alerting mechanism as well. And these sort of things are provided by Prometheus or Grafana. These are just an example. There are many other tools which can do that. And yeah, so in an actual production system, there will be many times when your code base will crash because of a bug. So you need tools to be able to debug and trace the source of the bug. So that keyword is called tracing. And there are certain tools which can help you in tracing and Jaeger tracing is one such example which can help you in trace the bug. Then comes load balancing. So a DevOps person is expected to have some knowledge on load balancing as well. So if you're hosting your application for 1000 users and all of a sudden you get up to million users. So how are you going to balance your requests? How are you going to scale and you also have to ensure that your uh, application is distributing the load among the servers in a meaningful manner. And those sort of load balancing can be done by various tools. Linkerd is one of the recent ones which I'm experienced with and this is really nice. Uh, Istio is another example as well. So this is just giving a little bit of overview of what a DevOps person 
is expected to know that might be many many other tools or qualities that a DevOps person may require this is just I'm talking from my own experience so far so coming back to what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to go through an example application basically I will show you what the application does then I'm going to talk about its overall architecture and then I'm going to give a quick overview of the code base. So the code is written in Go and the data communication is happening through gRPC. Uh, so the code base is not the most important part here, but I'm just going to show the overall workflow. That's the more important part. And then I'm also going to show the containerization aspect using Docker, like basically how it is done. I'm not going to go through all the details. I'm just going to tell you the overall workflow and also I will show the deployment process in Kubernetes and monitoring through logs. Okay, so first things first, what is the application? So this is a simple JavaScript game which basically tests your reaction and yeah, the what you have to do is basically click on these objects as soon as you can and this application is recording your current time and your best score which is you know the faster you click the better is your high score so this is the demo of the application so there are two back-end services behind this application which are doing two different things so one service is basically storing your high score and the other service is basically deciding the size of this object which you are supposed to click based on some algorithm so the details don't matter it's just an example I'm showing you next I'm going to show you the overall architecture so what you just saw is the front end which is basically the JavaScript game and behind the front end there are three other services and these services are written in Go and these communicate these services communicate between each other through gRPC so next I will do a quick overview of the code base so this is the index.html file for the front end and again the exact code is not important I will put a link to this code base this is one of the backend services which is written in Go Again, I'm not going to go through all the details. The details of the code base is not really important because I'm only going through the workflow here. So it will obviously differ for case to case. Next thing I'm going to talk about is how the containerization works. And we containerize applications using Docker. And for Docker, there is such thing called Docker file. So what this docker file does is basically it builds it somehow builds your application into uh, an image and you can run the image on any Linux machine and it will run the same way so this is basically the overall idea so this is if I run this docker file by using some docker command then it will give me an image which is basically one executable file and I can simply run it on any machine if I want. Similarly, this is the Docker file for the other backend service. So all the four backend services have their own Docker files so that they can be containerized. Once they're containerized, they can be deployed in Kubernetes just to give a brief overview of kubernetes so as i said it is a container orchestration tool which basically ensures that everything in your backend runs as expected these two are a couple of files related to kubernetes so this is a deployment file which basically runs the containerized application and uh, if you remember i mentioned about image so a docker file creates an image and you can feed this image into a kubernetes deployment file and ask it to run it okay so this is basically what it's doing i'm not going to go through more details but just to give an overall idea 
and there is this service file which basically exposes this deployment so that other services can talk to it. So now that I have talked a little bit about Docker and Kubernetes, now I'm going to show you some UI aspect of Kubernetes. So the Kubernetes UI dashboard some, somehow looks like this. What you can see here is the deployment. So I have four services and each of these services have their own deployments. So deployments ensure that your application runs as expected through running pods. So each of these deployments have their own pods. And so these three are my backend services and this is my frontend service. So I can open one of these links to see if things are running fine on my Kubernetes cluster. So this UI gives more information about each of my services and here I can click to see the logs. So these are the logs which my application prints out and it depends on what logs I asked it to do. So yeah, in this case, it's just logging that some service is getting called as I am playing this game. Okay, so these logs get filled up and using this, these logs are one way to monitor your system and you can simply look at the dashboards to see if the system is running fine here. So, you know, if it, one of the services was not running fine, I would see probably 25% of it as red. So all are showing green, which means everything is running as expected. Okay, so this is a very, very brief overview of a typical workflow. I didn't cover the continuous integration part as an example, but CircleCI is one of the tools which does uh, continuous integration. And what does it mean is that the steps which I mentioned about Docker, that you have to containerize your application and before that you have to test your application and these things can be automated using tools like CircleCI. So what would that mean in real world scenario would be that you save your code and you push it to GitHub and then automatically this building process will start. CircleCI will build and before that it will test your code as well and ultimately it will deploy to Kubernetes and so that you can see your services running in Kubernetes like that. Another example which I didn't cover is uh, Prometheus and Grafana. So these are monitoring or alerting tools just like you're seeing here in Kubernetes dashboard already but these are a bit more sophisticated. So Grafana looks something like this where you will directly see a dashboard giving you some information about your current running systems. So what does that mean is that if something goes wrong you will see in Grafana first. So you are not going to always look at the logs all the time to see if things are running fine, right? I mean, if something goes wrong, I will probably see, okay, one of the services is down here, but I'm not going to do that all the time. Uh, but Grafana dashboard, yeah, one office may have a big screen with a Grafana dashboard. And if something goes wrong, you will immediately see here, like some trend, some unknown trend happening or depending on what sort of rules you have set, you may get an alert on your phone or on your email or on your Slack that, okay, some service is down so that you can, you know, a DevOps person can check things and solve the issue. Another aspect I didn't talk about is uh, load balancing. So a DevOps person is supposed to have some idea about load balancing and what is load balancing is that yeah if you have multiple servers and if clients are requesting to a server then the load balancer has to balance the load and distribute the load based on certain predefined rules uh, so that overall all your servers are utilized properly okay so this is a very brief overview of what a typical flow can look like 
in DevOps or in software in general. And there are many other things which I didn't include, but this can be a start if you are a beginner. And all these code, I, I will put a link to this and with instructions for how to run. It is not possible to cover in one video all the technical details, but I have a whole course dedicated to it. So if you have any more questions, then feel free to ask. Thank you.